As previously mentioned in the review of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, the Sonic team were developing the game to such an extent they had too much content to fit onto a regular cartridge, and had to either delay development, scrap ideas, or split the game in two. The first half, Sonic the Hedgehog 3, was one of the best Mega Drive games on its own, but that's what it is, half the game. And eight months after its release, Sonic and Knuckles was released for the Sega Mega Drive October 1994. Combined with Sonic 3, this is the most beautiful, colourful, and cinematic of the Mega Drive series with side-scrolling backgrounds, gravity effects, lots of strong colours, a memorable soundtrack, and plenty of interactions from the characters. Once again, action speaking louder than words. All the zones feel like one giant level and slightly change the environment on each act. The extra cinematic touch without ruining the flow of the gameplay certainly helps. The Santa Polis Zone, for example. It's in the deserts, obviously, but the second act is in a pyramid with a couple of new obstacles and a boss to overcome, so you're not exactly playing the same act as the other. You can't even say that about the first three Sonic games. All the things I addressed in my Sonic the Hedgehog 3 review, including power-ups, item boxes, special stages, and controls, whether beneficial or detrimental, mostly beneficial, are present here, so I'm not going to repeat myself. As you can tell from the title screen, the story continues right after Sonic defeated Robotnik again, but the Death Egg is only damaged, again, the Floating Island is still on the ocean floor, and Sonic must retrieve the Master and Chaos Emerald from Robotnik and Knucklehead, who still thinks he's in the wrong, again. Meanwhile, Knuckles is with his animal friends when suddenly, Robo-Egg drops a bomb on him. This forces Knuckles to chase after Robo-Egg, culminating into a battle for the Master Emerald without the interference of Sonic. Funny that Dr. Robotnik has a robot version of himself. Because he finally takes a hint and that he's in the game's title, the only new big change is the addition of the Red Guardian as a playable character. He can glide, climb up walls, and smash through breakable ones without a spin attack, but he has a lower jump height compared to Sonic and can't utilize the shield power-ups. If you play to Sonic first, you're going to realize that playing as Knuckles amps up the difficulty, particularly in the boss battles. Look at the first one with Sonic. I could beat this one without taking any damage. For playing as Knuckles, the gameplay speed increases. Also on the special stages when you slowly increase in speed as you collect blue spheres, Knuckles goes even faster. It's easy to assume it's harder just because Knuckles' abilities are slightly inferior to Sonic, therefore controlling slightly worse. I'll admit, I didn't really enjoy playing as Knuckles, but it's challenging by design for the most part. You have to play both characters to notice the difference. The level designs can drone on for so long, I don't even see the point of time bonuses at the end of a level. Going back to the Santa Polar Zone, Act 2, I only had literally 10 seconds to spare, thanks mostly to this part where the sandslides go on for an eternity, and was initially confused as to how to get past them. Also, there's no save feature. Fortunately, you get the idea. I had a tough time trying to beat Sonic and Knuckles, but I don't think it has anything to do with the difficulty. I breezed through the first three Sonic games, whereas this is the first time I've ever tried to beat SNK. I know, sacrilege. Because it controls the same, at least if you play as Sonic, and the actual level designs are grade A for a 2D platformer, it rewards you for trial and error and level memorization. That is a mark of a video game masterpiece. I really like the effort put into the boss battles, from the designs to the difficulty curve, though I wouldn't be surprised if Treasure Games were put in charge of the finale, and put in as many boss battles as possible, just like they do in all their Mega Drive titles. This is when the paths between Sonic and Knuckles alternate. Knuckles goes through the hidden power zone, teleports himself onto Sky's Sanctuary, and is up against Mecha Sonic enhanced by the Master Emerald, whereas Sonic boards the Death Egg and fights everything inside. So while the Knuckles playthrough is harder throughout, Sonic has the higher quantity of boss battles towards the climax. I can't think of a different way to describe the gameplay in a 2D Sonic game because it's only slightly enhanced each title, and Sonic and Knuckles can't be any more similar to its predecessor. It's basically Sonic the Hedgehog 3.5. This leads us to the design of the cartridge. 
According to Yuji Naka, Sega management back then wanted the game out at a certain time and we only had half the stages done, so we had to put the leftovers into Sonic and Knuckles. So when you bought SNK and attached it to Sonic 3, you get the whole of what Sonic 3 was planned to have been. When you reach the launch base and defeat Robotnik, instead of concluding Sonic 3, it's only the halfway mark and it goes straight to the Mushroom Hill zone like it's just another level. Tails is a playable character along with Knuckles whom the latter has alternate routes, meaning the difficulty follows suit. And the multiplayer and save features implemented in Sonic 3 finally work on the SNK levels. Because the cartridges together use features from one and the other. I really don't want to know how these cartridges work together from a technical specification view. My brain is melting just saying that. If you got all seven Chaos Emeralds from Sonic 3, then at the beginning of SNK, accessing a giant ring brings you into the hidden palace with a chance to obtain a Super Emerald. The actual Blue Sphere collecting stages remain the same, but collecting all seven special emeralds transforms Sonic or Knuckles into Hyper Mode, making them more powerful. Even Tails has his own army of flickies. Furthermore, you have an extra stage to play through. The slot on top of the SNK cartridge does more than expand a game in two. If you insert Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Knuckles is a playable character, and inserting any other cartridge opens up a screen with Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Robotnik, and a title screen scrolling, no way, no way. It wasn't officially known as Blue Sphere until the Sonic Mega Collection was released in 2002. Here you'll access a mini game which are basically additional special stage levels. However, if you insert a Sonic 1 or Sonic compilation cartridge, you'll be given access to all the levels via password. So no, you can't play as Knuckles in the first Sonic game, that's what the manual says anyway, but if you really, really want to, check out the mobile version. That being said, I've never heard of a Mega Drive cartridge this complex with so many purposes it could be another review on its own. It is then you realise just how ambitious the Sonic team were when developing Sonic the Hedgehog 3. With both cartridges together, this is one of the greatest Sega Mega Drive games ever made. I get that you need to pay the equivalent of two games to get the full experience, which was ridiculous back then, but today, it's no longer the case, digitally, or on compilations at least. This is Sega at its finest, and a perfect way to conclude the Mega Drive series floating high before diving into the third dimension. So whenever you decide to play Sonic the Hedgehog 3, make sure you're playing the definitive version, Sonic 3 and Knuckles.